Hello everybody, today I'm uh, I'm gonna show you how to build some louvers. I'm gonna use this building by Herzog and Demuren, it's called a uh, central signal box in Basel, Switzerland. Uh, I'm gonna use it as an example. Here's some images of it. And this is sort of a simple diagram that shows uh, what I'm gonna try to do. So I'm gonna try to build a pattern base panel that's uh, that's gonna start out flat and then sort of rotate up 90 degrees around its axis. Uh, so let's get started. Let's open up a new uh, new family in Revit. It's going to be a current panel, pattern base, rectangular. First thing we want to do is uh, change the grid. So just click on the grid over here and change the size of it. I'll keep the 10 feet in horizontal. I'll change the vertical spacing to 3 feet. So make it a little bit more uh, elongated. It's going to be easier for me to uh, apply all the changes to it. Now the next thing we're going to do is going to drop some points. So just select a point, hit set, select the horizontal plane of each one of the existing points and then and drop another point in there. Let's do that for all four of those. Now let's just simply drag those points out next thing we're going to do, we're going to assign uh, an offset parameter to it so that we can assign this parameter to uh, all four of those points. <coughs> I'm sorry, this will uh, this will make sure that they all move together and they're in the same horizontal plane. So there you are. Our next step is to draw a reference line, make sure that we have uh, 3D snapping checked on. Let's connect those two points. Now select another, let's place another reference point on those two lines that we just created. Select it and call that an axis placement one and assign that same parameter to the other point. Now we want this parameter to be 0.5. It's just easier if it's in the middle for me to uh, drop the rest of it. It doesn't really matter where it's placed. So I'll, sh I'll show you guys how to uh, change that later. So uh, 3D snapping on. Let's connect those two points. Now drop a point on top of that line. Select it and make sure that the reference plans are shown always, not only when it's selected. We want to uncheck the 3D snapping. So let's do it again. And now, you see that little uh, pink triangle selecting? This tells me that it's uh, selecting the line. But if I hit tab, and it changes to a circle that's sort of crossed over. That tells me that it's selecting a point, and I want to snap to that point. So, so hit that. And draw it out six inches. Now tab around until you get this uh, sort of crossed out circle and draw this point six inches out. So if we move it, the line moves with it. This is exactly what we want. So this is the first line. Should be two more. And select those. Check always. And this one works too. Okay, now the next step is going to place another point on those lines. Add the parameter, call it axis. Placement 2. Add the same parameter to the other point. Draw a reference line. Check 3D snapping for this one. Now we can move it around to see if it works. Yeah. Now let's add two more points 
on the newly created line and make sure that those points also has the reference points always shown. Now uncheck the 3D snapping again. And let's draw it vertically. Six inches. They move, so it's all good. Let's do the same thing for the next one. Now, if we select the reference plane, automatically selects the point. So let's do that. And there's a rotation angle. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna add a rotation parameter to that. You might call this one a rotation. Rotation angle. And let's add that same parameter to this one. Now let's see if uh, no, different angle. So let's draw like 15 degrees. So you can see how the lines in, uh, in planes rotated. So this is exactly what we want. Change it back to zero. Now for each one of those points, I'm going to add a parameter to its hosted parameter. I'm going to call them point one. I'm going to add some more. There's still of six points. Point two, three, four, and six. Now let's assign them in the same order, point one. Uh, let's change those first because they're not. Let's make point one zero. Point three. Point four. That's just to, uh, I'm doing this to prevent them overlapping for now. So this is going to be point two, and the two points that are sort of on a different line are going to be point three and four. Now this is point five. Alright, the next step is to actually add geometry. So you want to select, you want to make sure that you select in the two lines, the reference lines that you drew. Hold Control, select the other two, and create form. Now you have to tab around to select the two lines. Select this one, this line, and then those two reference lines together. That should join them with the sort of twisting geometry. This is exactly what we want. Then we do the same for this. This looks basically what we want it to look like for the final product. The only thing that I'm um, going to do next is I'm going to assign some uh, controlling functions to uh, disallow breakage in the, in the, in the geometry. Uh, what I mean by breakage in the geometry is that if, uh, if I change the angle to anything above 90, for example 99 degrees, it's actually going to give me some weird intersecting geometry. This is basically the panel that we want. So uh, let's save that and uh, in the next part of this tutorial I'll show you how to uh, embed more functions and parameters into uh, into this panel to control it a little better and then how to apply it on the building.